Hey, Jay. Hello, hello. What's up? What's up? Welcome, welcome to the brand new season of Asia Rugby Live season three, episode one. This is Love. the first episode of the season. It is so good to see everyone. Thank you for joining us. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good night. Wherever you are. Uh, Thank you for tuning in to us. And of course, we want to keep the conversation going. And of course, to keep the conversation going, we need to talk to the right people. And I have exactly the right people to talk about rugby, especially in Asia. And we have two people to start with, which is Bad and Guy. And later, we have uh, Anatoly and also Mahfizul Islam, who are in charge of uh, South Asia and Central Asia. Okay, let's talk to uh, these guys first, Bad and Guy. First, Ben. How you been? How's things has been going for you? And probably you can, you know, talk about the success despite COVID nineteen last year. Yes, um, Rod. Yeah. I just have yeah, to say uh, we've been looking you forward to season you. three. Yes. So thank you for having us again. Um, I think I also need to congratulate you on the on the birth of your son. Oh, so, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Congratulations sir. on that one. So uh, yeah, if we talk rugby. Uh, you know, 2020, we all know 2020 has been the most challenging year ever and so on. But um, uh, when we look back, actually, a lot of good came from it. You know, um, early in 2020, we realized, uh, you know, traveling was not going to be that easy and so on. So what we did is we shifted most of our activities onto online platforms. And um, initially, when we started, we... Um, we had the idea of us Asia Rugby consultants delivering workshops and so on. And we soon realized that there was there was such a need for it. So basically what we did then was we pulled in instructors, educators from unions across Asia, and we went through a, a, a training process with them, uh, quality assurance and so on. And then in the end, they ended up delivering their own workshops and courses. So. Um, yeah, just to give you a ballpark figure, I think we we had about over 300 courses that were run online by various unions, by us, Asia Rugby Consultants, etc. So um, when we look back at 2020, we also spent some time, because we, we knew people were stuck at home, um, we spent some some time and money into investing the tra for translations, translation of, of World Rugby resources, um, stuff that's much needed in, in, in Asia, you know, with, with all our languages and so on. So I think that's something that, that kept us busy, kept other, kept, kept um, development staff busy. Um, another exciting news that we got is we, we, we have a match official development consultant at the moment just to get everything in line. So once competitions start, we can actually go out and have uh, better, better match officiating a, a, across Asia. So um, yeah, in all, all in all, I think the golden message that we got from 2020 is that through our constant engagement, we as development staff across all the unions and Asia rugby, we actually got closer together. Um, we've seen that on, on on workshops where unions jumped on calls and support others and so on. So um, yes, we've been we've been yeah, of course that was uh, pro probably 2020 was a big learning curve for everyone and uh, especially when there's no competition going on but probably uh, guys since guys first of all congratulations for being appointed the uh, competition consultants uh, last year Thank and you, of course, there are a lot of challenges uh, for you know competitions uh, in in uh, for rugby in Asia. Probably you can yeah. elaborate what did Asia rugby do to um, fill in the gap last year. Yeah, man. Uh, th thank you very much, Rod. Thank you for congratulating me. Uh, it, it's actually a baptism of fire, if that's the right thing to say. It, <laughs> it was a funny old year, twenty twenty, um, being appointed as competition consultant with no co with no competitions to actually run. But I think, as, as, as Ben just said, as we got into quarter two of, of 2020, we realized probably flexibility and adaptability is going to be a big, big factor in the way we run, we run our business, whether it's development, competitions, in every aspect of actually of, of our day-to-day day -day business. So um, 
it, it's, it's not a secret. We had uh, we, we worked really close with the um, Asia Rugby Medical Committee and Player, well, uh, Player Welfare Committee. They advised uh, against holding any competitions. We had to go and, and, and cancel all our competitions 2020. Not at once, of course. We went basically quarter by quarter, but as things went on, we realized we're not going to have any competitions. So uh, uh, we had to work, uh, work as, as every other region. We had to work on our COVID-19 protocols, on our return to play protocols, which, which, which is going to feature really uh, big in, in 2021 calendar. But when we talk about 2020 competitions, we had a couple of, 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 of big competitions which we, 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 ha we had to commit to. And there were Rugby World Cup uh, pathways, basically. So we had the Asia Rugby Women's Championship uh, 2020, which was a pathway to Rugby World Cup 2021 in New Zealand. We are still committed to running that. It was a carryover for us uh, to 2021. Now we're, we're working closely with the unions uh, to work out uh, how, how the best to, to run it, to give everyone the best chance to qualify. We have the under-19s. Uh, men's championship as well, which is a pathway to the World Rugby Junior Trophy. So we had a couple of big, big events which we had to carry over. It wasn't just a case of cancelling competitions. We took we took the chance when we had no no competitions on the ground to look at new members for Asia Rugby. So um, we looked at reaching out to new members. Uh, we had a couple of success stories. We had Iraq and Palestine uh, as part of West Asia join us as new members. Uh, ben and I uh, spent a lot of time uh, looking at uh, governance for, for the unions, basically doing an audit uh, to identify areas how we can best uh, support those unions. So while our normal activities had to be stopped, we looked, we were adaptable, we were flexible, where we looked at other opportunities where we can actually serve the game and, and support members and support unions. So that's 2020 for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um... Actually, after all the quarters, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three uh, has ended, I was, um, to be honest, I was expecting something, but you know, we, we, we can't, we can't do anything about it. But hopefully for 2021 would be better. And for that, probably Man. Ben, you can, you can take us through the, yeah. the stuff, the, the plan, what we're going to do for 2021. You're right, man. Staying positive was, was very important. Mm. As we went through 2020, yeah. talking between us as consultants, uh, staying positive was our number one priority. Always hope that things are going to get back to, and, and, and inshallah, it's going to happen soon. Yes. Yeah, for sure, for yes. sure. Yes. And, and, and talking about the, you know, planning for 2021, Ben, can you take us through what's, uh, what's going to happen for 2021? Well, Rod, one thing that we've learned is that um, the, on, the online platforms do work. So we don't need to change that. Um, I think what what we will do, what we will see is we'll keep continuing with with the online workshops and online world rugby courses, etc. Hopefully, at some stage, we can look at hybrid ones, at uh, blended ones, where part of part of of the course can be delivered online, and then the other part um, delivered face to face when 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 situation changes. Um, but our main priority is to get return to play. So when we say return to play, we want to see rugby out there. We want to see organized competitions. We want to see people getting excited about playing the game again. So what we can do from our side is we can we, we, we can support in terms of return to play, whether that is um, through variation games and, and um, you know, return to play in terms of player welfare guidance, but um, also return to educate, of course, and then in the end, hopefully return to play. Um, there's, there's a couple of other exciting projects that, um, that's, that's going to happen in, in the early part of 2021 is the Unstoppables program. I'm, I'm sure we have talked about the Unstoppables program, which is uh, a copy of the World Rugby uh, program, the Unstoppables program. So we actually had over 80 women be nominated for this. Um, we, we want to raise the profile of women, women and women's rugby across Asia. So um, we have now identified 32, one from each of the 32 unions that, that sent a nomination through. And our next step is then to, to narrow it down to our starting 15, our top 15 unstoppables. And we'll run this program right through to Rugby World Cup 2021. 
to, to raise the profile. So that's something exciting coming up. Um, something else that, that's also exciting that's coming up. We, um, we are in partnership with Japan Rugby for a, for a, for a fitness and strength and conditioning online uh, courses that we'll, where that we'll deliver or that they will deliver, but uh, that we'll make sure that, that the news gets out and that we can get all unions involved in that. So, uh, yes, it's going to be a busy year, and, and I think we'll, we'll celebrate the, the moment that we can, we can actually have all units play again. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that online training by uh, Japan Rugby. Hopefully, uh, I can participate uh, in that. And uh, probably, right. guys, uh, if you talk about uh, tournaments uh, in 2021, guys, yeah. you must have a big headache in planning things. Probably you can share with us on things that's going to yeah. happen in 2021. Oh, okay. Yeah, planning, planning was, was, was a big part of the last probably five months for us. Uh, we planned we, 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 we planned our, our plan A basically is have a normal calendar where we play all our normal competitions, ev give everyone or as, as, as many unions as possible to, comp to compete on, a, on an Asia rugby level, whether 15s or, or 7s. We are being realistic. We looked at plan, uh, other, other plans in case um, COVID uh, uh, doesn't go away. So return to play is, is, is something we're, lo we're looking for. And we realize that we have the big, big tournaments. So next, next year, we have a number of tournaments that would serve as qualifiers. One of them is the Women's Rugby Championship, uh, Women's Championship which, I, which I mentioned before. We've got uh, as well. We've got the Rugby World Cup Sevens in 2022 where our Asia Rugby 7 Series will serve as a pathway for that. The Asia Men Championship uh, will be as well a pathway for Rugby World Cup 2023. So the, these are the, the, the big, big tournaments that we're, we're hoping these competitions will go ahead as planned. Looking on the other side, we realize that there hasn't been any rugby for, for a good year now, where unions haven't played. So return, return to play has featured a lot in our planning. And whether it's uh, cross borders competitions, we realize maybe uh, traveling across Asia is, is a bit restricted still, uh, but maybe cross border where uh, uh, unions who are close to each other, where it's easier to travel between them, whether by bus or by, by train. There is an opportunity there where we can offer them to play some cross border competition. Uh, we're looking into that. That's an opportunity that we need to, to, to basically appreciate and realize. Uh, we've got as well uh, domestic competition. So we, we, we want to support unions uh, in their domestic competition. We, we do appreciate there hasn't been a lot of rugby before. Uh, so we can't just throw people into international rugby without them having a strong domestic competition. So that's another branch, if you want to call it, into return to play. So um, we are focusing on this now. So we're in TQ1. Uh, Hopefully, COVID will will uh, will be uh, helpful and will will go as as planned. If not, we are looking at other other opportunities for return to play. Going off track a little bit, probably either yeah. one of you, Ben or guys, can can answer this. Um, talking about tournaments, do you guys have uh, you know things uh, something in plan? Like, if a player or a team wants to compete in that particular competition, uh, cross-border competition, they will need to get the COVID-19 vaccination or something like that. Any one of you can answer that. Uh, we have we have put together a document which is Asia Rugby uh, regulations uh, specific for COVID-19 competition. And, to, and it, it, we, we look at basically providing uh, negative PCR tests uh, four days before a tournament and on arrival. Uh, keeping keeping teams in their in their respective bubbles basically on the ground um, uh, when there when there are days where there are no competitions teams will have to stay within their, their basically hotel rooms um, accommodations look being looked after um, look at it differently uh, the way food is served to teams is looking at differently now so instead of having for example a buffet for all the teams where they can dine and eat and mingle together now we're going to have specific dining areas for every team so we have looked, so our, uh, our basic tournament manual is still the same. However, we have a COVID-19 document which is attached to it now, which host unions will, will, will have to follow, traveling unions will have to follow. Uh, where possible, unions might have to create their own bubble maybe three or four days before they travel just to, to um, restrict any unnecessarily um, uh, uh, contact with, with people outside that, that team. So 
it will put it will put pressure on organize on organizing uh, unions. It put pressure on traveling teams because, as as we all know, uh, the majority of our players are amateurs. But it it is the nature of the beast that we have to deal with. So we will have to we all have to work together basically to make this work. Uh, I'm sure you had a really. Uh, a, a big headache when planning this when you talk just now everything is you know carefully planned yeah. and you know heads off to you and and ben for you know doing Thank this planning much, this man. yeah <laughs> and hopefully like i said hopefully uh we can see a tournament happen uh, yes. cross Inside cross us. borders especially uh, happening yes. this year uh and i think moving forward we want to talk about the uh, development of uh, other uh, regions in Asia. Probably we can talk about uh, South Asia, which uh, Mafizul Islam can talk about it. And I think he is ready. We can bring him on. Um, let us see. Let us see if he's on. Yeah, there you go. Mafizul Islam. Mafizul. Assalamualaikum. And hey, first of all, Mafizul, congratulations for being appointed the south asia development consultant um i think you deserve it probably because of you asking that many questions <laughs> on facebook <laughs> awarded you that, that job exactly. <laughs> as uh, the rugby development officer so guys out there please keep on asking the right questions and who knows you might land this i i would say fantastic, <laughs> fantastic <job. laughs> okay okay uh, if you can share with us you know things that is happening in uh south asia right now what what have you put in a uh, place to 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 plan and and stuff like that bismillahirrahmanirrahim thank you assalamu alaikum uh, yes, of course. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't like a, a new job for me. Uh, I, I was working with the same people, same individuals from last four and five years. Even the union representatives, the union leaders. I, I know everyone uh, well. It's just change of hat. So uh, it is not a tough. It wasn't a tough for me. And yes, of course. Uh, it, there's a lot of things are happening in South Asia because we had we had a meeting with the union representative earlier when we found that they are very helpful and they try to uh, help each other actually in, in the same time we are we are looking for the uh, how we can return to play and which includes the tournaments and the preparations of the tournament as well in the in the same time the we we, we can see that bangladesh is one of the union uh, fortunate to be uh, returned to the local tournaments uh, already Sri Lanka is planning for the year tournament already. Uh, Nepal ha having a uh, contract with the school school committee. We, uh, with we, uh, then they now will access or the or maybe the all of the schools right now, and uh, also India is going uh, very very good. The most the fastest yeah, even in the online works. So for for that, that everything is going as as far the plan, but. As as you concerned about the COVID, I I would I would I would say that uh, we shouldn't lost the COVID. We we should we should work for it and how it to be covered and how it how it can be tackled, and uh, and and maybe in in few few months we will be able to be travel and play for rugby even even if not can be in the Asia rugby tournaments for instant maybe in quarter one or quarter two. But still, uh, maybe in, in the later on the, in this year we can uh, play and maybe maybe work in the cross border as well. Hey, right. you have you have a lot of passion there, man. Really good to to to, to have someone like you as the rugby uh, development consultant. So where does this passion comes from? Where does this passion for development and also to you know, to help people, especially to help rugby in South Asia, come from? Uh, it's it's about to if if you work and your work is is to develop the rugby uh, is a passionate game where we can get the all values in so the peop the people uh, who who have good understanding will will understand the values in in the in the rugby and it it's there's no harm but it it is great it, it was a blessing to having those values to be spread on mm. Thank you very much, uh, Mafizo Islam, for sharing that. And I'm sure uh, South Asia is in good hands 
of of you, Mafizu Islam. And I'm sure if you don't know anything, you will ask Ben. I can yeah. I, I can bet on that, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yes. Um, I, I just want to jump in here. I, I think one one of one of Mafizul's immediate tasks of within the next next few months is is also to to get more unions involved in rugby in South Asia. To, to eventually get rugby into the South Asia games. So, um, so yeah, look out for that. Hopefully by, by the end of the year, we could could have national governing bodies in, in one or two or more unions. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. We, 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 are, we, we are now working with the Maldives and Bhutan closely uh, to their Olympic committees. And uh, inshallah, we will be able to uh, say good news about including them, them uh, to a start of the rugby day, and I hope we, uh, by the support of support of the all other union in the sub region, and of, for, with the Asia rugby, they they will be able to be compete, and inshallah we will be try to, to try our best to put the game in the South Asian Games for for the next one. That's it. And hopefully inshallah. that will be happening as well for you guys at least. Uh, like I said just now, for competitions, cross-border competitions, we are so looking forward to that. But at least that like you say, uh, um, local tournaments are happening in some areas, in some countries. That is good as well. And hopefully, again, cross-borders competition, international competition, that is something that everyone look forward to. Especially I look forward to that after, what, one year plus of not seeing international rugby <laughs> in Asia. <laughs> Anyway, Mafizo, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, again, like I said just now, uh, South Asia is lucky to have someone who is so passionate about development who, like I said, asks the right questions and you are the best person for the job. Again, all the best and thank you very much for being on the show. And next, I think we would like to get an update on Central Asia and of course the right person for this is Anatoly. Where is he? Anatoly, I think he's ready as well. Probably Anatoly can update us on the things that's happening on in Central Asia, which is a lot, of course. Uh, that's as far as I know. There you go. The birthday for Anatoly. Anatoly. Anatoly, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Anatoly. Thank you. Um, Huh? You look very nice on your birthday, you know, with uh, wearing. We are, we are underdressed today. Yeah. <laughs> we are so underdressed compared to you. But Asia rugby always in my heart, always uh, with me. Uh, good. That's good. Really good. You know, and thank okay, you, uh, uh, thank you very much for being with us on your birthday for taking some time off uh, on your birthday. Probably you can share with us, you know, what's happening around Central Asia. Okay, um, last uh, year, yeah, um, but uh, in Uzbekistan, uh, end of the year, we came to conduct uh, some uh, major sport events. It was a rugby championship, a rugby seven championship, military cup, uh, some training camps for women and men's teams, and uh, men's team also um, was opportunity to join in tournament in Russia. It was in uh, August. Um, if we will speak about uh, Kyrgyzstan, um, in Kyrgyzstan we conduct a um, working uh, meeting with the uh, National Olympic Committee of Kyrgyzstan and uh, Agency of Sport of Kyrgyzstan and discuss uh, some questions uh, regarding development of uh, Kyrgyzstan in future. And the uh, result of this um, meeting was uh, uh, beach rugby was included in multi event, um, multi sport events uh, on the school. It will be in September, first week of September, and take opportunity. Uh, we invite uh, all teams who want to join of this event. Uh, also, was a good um, discussion with guys from uh, Russia rugby and uh, discuss opportunity to conduct a um, military cup between military teams of uh, this country and Russia uh, in Bishkek. Uh, it's um, planning um, in May for this year. Uh, if you speak about uh, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan uh, focused on uh, training cap of women's team and uh, 
hope uh, women's team of Kazakhstan have a good chance to go to rugby women's cup for this year. Uh, also, uh, Ben in November come in uh, Uzbekistan and we together with Ben and educators from uh, Uzbekistan conducted a super week uh, in two regions, the Para region, it uh, was a new region in Uzbekistan and for students of new rugby faculty which was opened uh, in last year and uh, all students it's a uh, uh, players who now play in uh, national teams and uh, collected from all Uzbekistan and now uh, study and training in one place and this was a very uh, good uh, super week for students. If uh, you I speak think... about my personal achievement, um, I finished a course of management of rugby club and federation in uh, Russia Rugby Academy and uh, start collect a personal library uh, for sport management and uh, marketing and I hope it's in future it uh, will help to develop rugby and uh, sport uh, total in Uzbekistan and Central Asia. Oh, that is really uh, comprehensive. You must be really, really busy in, uh, in, in, in Uzbekistan and also trying to manage uh, the whole of Central Asia and with uh, you know Kazakhstan, the Kazakhstan women's team who are staying a yeah. chance to um, go to the women's rugby World Cup. So I think you must be involved as well, being busy uh, together with the Kazakhstan rugby union. Yeah. There was actually yes. Rob, they, they, they're still in a chance to qualify to for the rugby World uh, World Cup twenty twenty one. And yep. the Olympics as well. So they're, they're, they're in the Olympic record charge as well. So they still have a chance to qualify there. So it's a busy year for women's rugby in Kazakhstan. In terms of Central Asia, right, uh, if we talk about cross borders competition, what are the plans for that? Uh, unfortunately, uh, last year it's uh, not uh, was opportunity to organize a cross border competition because uh, borders was closed. Mm. Oh, so, but, but how about this year? How about 2021? For this year, yes, we plan, but uh, we have plan and uh, situation with uh, COVID, uh, uh, if it will be all good, uh, we, of course, implement this uh, events in May. For sure, for sure. And hopefully, like I said, like I said, that uh, we are looking forward to that and hopefully, um, you know, local local tournaments will be happening all across uh, South Asia, and we would like to see uh, something happening there. And again, a cross border competition. And Natoli, thank you very much for joining us today. Sorry for taking your time on your birthday. Again, happy birthday, and hopefully you had a happy good birthday. time with your family. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, man. And uh, bye bye. for those out there, guys, if you have any questions, please do ask. We have Ben and Guy here to answer all your questions. You want to talk about tournaments, you want to talk about planning, training, and education. Ben and Guy are the right people to answer your questions. And uh, since we have asked about um, Central Asia, let's talk about West Asia as Guy is here. So, Guy, can you enlighten us? What's uh, the plan for Central? Uh, sorry west asia rugby west asia it's been it's been a, a, a busy region i have to say um as ben has said we looked at membership so we have two new members and in, in associate members uh, so um, palestine and iraq are the latest members uh, to join asia rugby uh, last year in 2020 they're going strong iraq had their uh, domestic sevens about a couple of weeks ago they played domestic rugby which is very pleasing uh, both men and women. So it's going really strong there. They they hosted a couple of TNE activities. Palestine are working hard as well on their development. Uh, it's um, it's a special situation where they work in Lebanon and Palestine. But one pleasing thing uh, for us, uh, coming back to the point that uh, Ben has raised about us working with development coordinate, coordinators at, at unions and federations and, and committees to empower them for online training uh, Palestine has managed to run their first online get into rugby um, for their development officers. They all planned it, ran it all by, by themselves, and they managed to do some on-ground activities in, in, in Lebanon and Palestine. And this is 
this is a very, very pleasing from our point of view. We empower people and they go out there and, and uh, they grow the game, which is, which is brilliant. So um, we have um, Syria now are going strong. They're applying for World Rugby Associate membership. Uh, so good luck to them. Uh, they've applied already. Probably uh, we'll hear back from World Rugby in the next couple of months. Lebanon are going strong as well. They're applying for full membership. So uh, again, good luck to them. Uh, so unions are, are getting stronger. Uh, Saudi Arabia, they are based, uh, based, they've got new management now. They're working hard. They've got a very strong development plan for the next four years. Uh, ben and I are itching to go down there and, and, and support them on the ground once we uh, travel is back is back on, 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 on the table, basically, to go there because it's looking really um, uh, exciting there. Um, Jordan, uh, very strong. They haven't had any domestic rugby, but they're, they're, they're looking to come back soon. I know there are plans to, for them to restart the domestic rugby soon. So, yeah, it's, it's, people are working hard. Uh, they're making the best out of their um, uh, circumstances now. But West Asia is, 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 is going strong. And of, of course, it's a big challenge for you. Uh, you know, if you talk about development over there, it, to, to go to these places to give support. It's a, it's a big challenge, yeah, guys. Yeah, of course, it's a it's a challenge, but it's 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 unique place because if you look at at the countries uh, from a competition point of view, they're all around the same level. So there is a big opportunity there for for cross border competition. Uh, if you look at places where we cannot travel, for example, for various reasons, uh, they can travel across uh, to a one central location where we can have uh, regional mm -hmm. training camps for them. And they're all willing to work together, and that, that's really pleasing. That's it. it um, so once we, we suggest something like this, they're all willing to, to come down. So we are actually excited about being able to travel to go and meet people in one location or or in, um, a number of different locations. But yeah, it's a challenge, but it's it's unique and an exciting one. Uh, ben, you know, since yes. we have covered South Asia, we have covered Central Asia and also West Asia. Yes. Probably you can talk about the other regions like Southeast Asia, my area, and also the other parts as well. Uh, you know, what was the plan for, for you guys? <laughs> okay, so um, Rod, when we talk about Southeast Asia, I think it's similar to what, what Gaith mentioned in West Asia. Um, the, the unions are concentrated in, in, in one area where um, reaching reaching the the neighboring country is, is, is just one flight and, and, and an hour or two away. So basically what, what we, we put, we, we've put on the ice a, a couple of projects that we actually want to roll out in Southeast Asia. Um, there's, there's, there's one big event on the calendar in November 2021, which is the, the, the Sevens Trophy. So if we think of, of the last time the Sevens Trophy was played, we had... Um, 12 men and nine women's teams there. So 21 teams in, 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 in one location. So that's, that's, that's a, it's a big date on our calendar. And hopefully by November, things will be, will be easier for us to, to actually get as, as many teams take part. I think most of the developing unions are looking forward to this. Um, again, um, they're all on this more or less on the same level. So, um, so, so they get good, Good competition, and and, and that uh, um, they can test their strength and so on. So around that, we've been um, planning to to have, for instance, a match official camp uh, around that, so we can use that twenty one team tournament to develop match officials. Um, also, we're looking at perhaps having a development workshop, which would be ideal, in in Jakarta, um, also in South Southeast Asia. Um, part of our plan is to to have a workshop where we take the coaches up to a next level. We call it, um, you know, our, te our technical uh, development advisory panel, where we will get experts from from, from um, all over the world in to um, to work with coaches. So yeah, so we we have a lot of plans waiting for South and Southeast Asia. Um, yeah, and I think la lastly. Uh, um, we, we we also want to invest in in women's and women's development. Um, we want to to have more women qualify as as educators. Um, so that's that's part of our priority. So that would most probably happen in in, in Southeast Asia. 
And um, yeah, I think um, just just one mention on on on, on women is that um, later on in the year in Hong Kong, around the Hong Kong sevens, which has moved again to November twenty twenty one. Um, we're also planning, um, with in col collaboration with Hong Kong Rugby, uh, a, a women's women in leadership forum. So uh, yes, we've got a busy calendar. We just we just need to get out there. We just need to um, to hope that things normalise and and we we can go on with our work. So um, that's South and Southeast Asia. If you talk about uh, women's rugby, just you now you mentioned yes. a lot of women's rugby. These regions that you just mentioned, the the the, the number of women's rugby player and also women's coaches are increasing. And and what are what are the tactics that be, that is being used to you know grow uh, these these numbers in these okay. regions that probably can be implemented in other regions as well. Okay, so so I can tell you for for instance, if you look at South Asia, um, the fact that the South Asia unions took rugby to the girls uh, because no other sport did it, so so that's that's a bottom bottom up, and then one or two years later we will see that these countries would have a, a an under eighteen girls team take part in an Asia competition. So that's that's that. Um, in other in other unions, especially in West Asia, what we've we've seen we've actually seen the bottom down approach. So, if we think of of just over the last eighteen months, two years, the likes of Jordan and Syria and Lebanon fielded the 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 first first women women seven aside teams that played in in national or Asia rugby uh, competitions. So. For a for one team to take part in a competition like that inspires others, and then then you get more participation coming through schools and so on, where girls actually say, "Yes, I want to be there one day. I want to put on that national national shirt." So so there are many different strategies. Um, yeah, I, I would say one of those two would work. Um, ideally, if you have a, a bottom up and a, a top down, it would 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 yield the most players and the, and the quality of rugby and i guess the unstoppables program as well has been mm. has been tremendous uh in terms of you know the participation and also the the, the promotion going around as uh That's right. you need role models. Really You're right. participating exactly. right role, yeah. role models and i think from west asia ben ben can uh, as well support that we had a role model come out of syria sarah abdelbaki the first female referee and we've spoken about her before, but that, that, was, that was a great driver behind uh, women's rugby. So she exactly. inspired a lot of uh, young women around West Asia that, yes, I, I can not just be a player, I can be a referee, I can be a, a coach. So we, we, we've got some success story around around Asia for women's mm -hmm. rugby, which is very yeah. pleasing. I agree. Um, yeah, Rod, I think it's, it's, it's also worth mentioning, you know, uh, we, we have um, Nahid in, in, in Iran, Iran that was yeah. was yeah. the was a world rugby uh, unstoppable and we we know that that she's she's inspirational in Iran started her own club um was involved or still is involved with the union but uh, the good news is that she's actually now on Asia rugby exco you know so so mm -hmm. so that that shows that there is no there is no glass ceiling, or if, if there's a perception there's that no there's a glass ceiling, we, we're getting it out of the way. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, you know, with, with a woman like Nahid and um, Karina from, from Indonesia. Karina, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're really That's doing right. well for themselves. And like, uh, like Guy said just now, uh, they are role models for other girls to and inspiring other girls to to come out and yeah. you know play rugby as well and 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 I think it's really interesting like um, as we all know uh, women's rugby is one of the fastest growing sport in the world Definitely. and especially in Asia correct. yeah yeah and for Asia for us to hop on that train and probably you you never know one day we can be one of the best teams in the world would be, would be definitely great yes. You know, moving yeah. forward, um, probably there's uh, guys you can share with us if there's any exciting competitions 
that we can expect in the future. Oh, man, there, there is a lot. There is a lot yeah. to be excited about 2021. Um, yeah. Cross, cross border is gonna give a lot of people a chance to play, which is which is good. It will probably put less pressure on their finances and and time and all this. So cross border, um, look 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 for news. Hopefully, uh, soon by Q2 we'll be able to announce uh, something. We are really looking forward to introducing beach rugby as a major rugby uh, core event. Uh, on on the calendar on the competitions calendar so beach rugby is another thing we we uh, we are excited to to get it's going to be um, hopefully not just national uh, national teams going to be a family uh, ec exciting event where we'll have people come in from all ages watch and and, and enjoy uh, the beach and enjoy rugby and enjoy so the, this it's a very exciting project we're working on so um, yeah guys uh, keep your heads up 2021 is going to bring in some some Really good news, really exciting stuff for us. For sure. Uh, okay, last one, probably for Ben. Okay. Ben, can you give us some tips on how we can um, give the players around Asia? Because, you know, there's no competition. There's not much that be happening. But how can we give them, how can we lift up the spirits of players around Asia through rugby? Okay, through rugby, I would say... Um, the fact that people people are, are, are stuck at home, I, I would say we can get, look at the, the fitness component of rugby. Um, through that, we th there's um, like the Japanese program that that we're going to launch and all of that, just to get people moving again once they can get out and that once there are no restrictions. So I think that that is is, is one of the areas, and I think in terms of, of personal development for coaches. For players in itself, I can just give you an example of of, of rugby in Pakistan, where they they actually had they went on on, 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 on on a development drive and they they encouraged their players to to join the World Rugby Passport, and they got over one thousand seven hundred new people register on World Rugby Passport. So so the engagement could be at this stage when people can't really get out there is just and be engaged through through personal development. I would say that's that's one thing. Um, wherever it's possible, um, I, I would say to people um, just just go and and find some rugby to watch. There's the Six Nations. There's some other there's some other competitions coming up. Just just to watch this. Um, hopefully, we can have Kuram can can show some of the reload material where we can watch games of the past, but. Um, in an ideal world, um, yes, just improve your skills, be patient, get get yourself fit the moment that, that we can start rugby, get out there and go and enjoy it. Um, just just one, one other thing that we realized is um, with some of the restrictions in terms of um, player welfare with, it, with, with uh, re regards to COVID, um, we realized that, that in some countries, um, Touch rugby is, is 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 not frowned upon, but con contact rugby is um, is 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 not um, um, recommended by by local authorities. So I would just say, yeah, just just go to the park, take a ball, and, and play touch rugby. Yeah, that that's what I would do. Um, yeah, with your mates, yeah. Or yes. just take the ball yes. and kick it to the to the post. That's what I would yeah, do. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, I think um, we 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 actually need a. a something like an online kicking competition or something like this or a passing competition or something like this. So we'll leave it up to our media guys to come up with something that we can actually engage everybody across Asia. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, think Rod, Rod, just, 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 just before we sign off, I, I would say, um, you know, we, we've talked, we, we've looked back at 2020 and said, wow, it's been tough. We'd have actually accomplished a lot. And we've, we've looked at 2020. We've got all up. Our, our plans on paper um, but I do want to say you know that we have been very very well supported with by Asia rugby management by our CEO and by the leadership from from case our president to to Vela our development um, committee chairman and and of course everybody on on, on Asia rugby Exco so they have supported us um, so I think in that sense yes. Again, same message. We can't wait to return to play. Yeah. Yeah. And you are not alone, Ben. You are not yeah. alone. And definitely, 
uh, guys, thank you very much for that really great sharing session. Really great, I would say, to kick off the brand new season of Asia Rugby Live to tell people to keep the conversation going. And that's what we are yes. doing right now to keep the conversation going, to return to play. That's what's important. That's And what again, we, yeah. we are looking forward to the tournaments, to the uh, developments, to the training and education, everything that you guys are doing. Again, good job, guys, for last year. Of course, last year was a big learning curve. It was was something that unprecedented, but you guys nailed it. Great job, guys. And for 2021, everyone is looking forward to the future, to return to play, to the games, uh, especially me. <laughs> anyway, um, and for you guys out there, look out for the Unstoppables program that is um, coming. Uh, we are, I think we are going to announce that soon, right, Ben? The, the, the finalists who are going to uh, the World Rugby Unstoppables and of course the online Japanese um, World Cup program, return to play, etc. Et There's so much happening. Don't forget to log on to www.asiarugby.com for your latest news and of course uh, follow uh, the Instagram and Facebook of HR Rugby Live to get the latest news, to get the latest updates, to get the latest happenings. And of course, like Ben said just now, reload. Sometimes we, we replay all these you know, old games and whatnot. So that's for you guys to, you know, to lift your spirits. Who knows? Anyway, thank you very much for joining, Ben. You. Guys, you guys has been great. And for you, those out there, thank you very much for joining, guys. I'm Rod. See you guys next week. Goodbye.